Hello everyone! In this video, we will give a brief overview about RNA sequencing and the use cases of RNA sequencing in research. This video is funded by the National Science Foundation, the University of Delaware, and the Functional Annotation of Animal Genomes Consortium, or FANG. The FANG Consortium is an international collaboration which is funded by top research and science institutes. The main purpose of this consortium is to conquer the genome to phenome challenge and establish protocols to efficiently analyze and annotate genome-wide functional data for animal species. To that end, RNA sequencing is one of the essential techniques used. So what is RNA? DNA undergoes transcription to produce two types of RNA, which are coding RNA and non-coding RNA. Coding RNA or messenger RNA molecules are translated to proteins while non-coding RNA molecules are not. Non-coding RNA molecules function in many biological processes, including translation, RNA splicing, and the regulation of gene expression and epigenetic mechanisms. What is RNA sequencing? Simply put, RNA sequencing is a snapshot of RNA sequences being expressed at a given time. Now, let's talk about how to isolate RNA molecules for sequencing. The majority of the next-generation sequencing technologies use similarly-sized double-stranded DNA synthesized from a single-stranded RNA known as cDNA as an input. That's why, for RNA sequencing, RNA molecules are converted into cDNA and sequence libraries of these cDNA molecules are used for sequencing. RNA sequencing starts with the extraction of total RNA from a tissue or a whole organism by using chaotropic agents, detergents, and protease. iRNA is highly abundant in total RNA. To extract data from more informative parts of the transcriptome, iRNA should be depleted with different strategies in RNA sequencing. Selection of the iRNA removal method depends on the final product of interest. Most commonly used iRNA removal methods are Polyase selection, rRNA depletion, and size selection. The polyase selection method is commonly used for obtaining only decoding RNA molecules. Polyase selection captures the polyadenylated RNA molecules such as mRNAs. rRNA depletion is used for total RNA sequencing analysis, and it provides information about coding RNA and non-coding RNA molecules. Finally, size selection method is used for microRNA experiments. Adapters consist of the specific sequences necessary for RNA sequencing, and they must be added to the end of the fragments. These specific sequences include elements needed for clonal amplification and attachment to the sequencing support, as well as the elements for priming the reaction. Moreover, Multiplexing the libraries can be achieved by addition of short barcode sequences. This approach enables pulling the libraries from different experiments into one sequencing reaction and helps reduce time and cost for sequencing. The most commonly used sequencing methods for RNA sequencing are Illumina sequencing by synthesis and PecBio's small molecule real-time or smart sequencing. Reads from Illumina are often 50 to 150 base pairs long, when pack by reads average around 8,000 base pairs. The main advantage of Illumina is that it is faster, cheaper, and more accurate than PacBio. However, due to the long reads of PacBio, PacBio sequencing doesn't require transcriptome assembly, and transcript isoforms can be more easily identified. Here is how Illumina's RNA sequencing method works. First, the library is loaded onto a flow cell and DNA fragments are amplified. Fluorescent LaTeX nucleotides with reversible terminators are added to the DNA. The terminators assure that only one base is added each round. Next, the nucleotide complementary to the first base will be incorporated. Each type of nucleotide will emit a unique light wavelength when it is added to the DNA strand. In the final step, the base is called by the sequencing machine and the terminator is cleaved, allowing the next nucleotide to be added. Here are some recommendations for Illumina sequencing runs. For differential expression, you will need fewer reads than for rare transcript or de novo assembly. You will also need fewer reads if sequencing small genomes versus large genomes. Another sequencing method is 
PEC-BIOS Smart Sequencing. With this technique, DNA polymerase enzyme is fixed at the bottom of a small structure called a ZMW. A ZMW is so small that only a single nucleotide being incorporated by the DNA polymerase can be observed. Each of the four DNA bases is attached to a different fluorescent dye. When a nucleotide is incorporated by the DNA polymerase, the fluorescent tag is cleared off, the fluorescent signal is detected, and a base call is made by the machine. The fluorescent tag then diffuses out of the ZMW, where it is no longer observable. The sequencing reads from the Illumina and PecBio methods are often combined together to create hybrid genome assemblies for DNA sequencing. Illumina reads are often used to error correct the lengthy PecBio reads, creating long, accurate reads that are great for assembly. RNA sequencing is moving in this direction as well because this hybrid approach has shown successful results for identifying transcript variants. The actual analysis of RNA sequencing data has as many variations as there are applications of this technology. Scientists design experiments and adopt different analysis strategies depending on the organism being studied and their research goals. Let's walk through the major steps for a typical RNA sequencing analysis. Quality control for the raw reads involves the analysis of sequence quality, artifacts or contaminations. These values are experiment and organism specific. High quality reads are mapped to either a genome or a transcriptome. We expect slightly lower total mapping percentages because reads coming from unannotated genes will be lost. Sometimes there is no reference genome or transcriptome available for the species we are studying. In this situation, the RNA sequencing reads are put back together in order to reconstruct the original sequence. After data analysis, we can translate the results based on functional annotation to understand the biological effects. Now that we understand what RNA and RNA sequencing is, what is RNA sequencing used for? RNA sequencing can be applied in all domains of life, from bacteria to the great blue whale. There are many popular uses of RNA sequencing. For example, Differential expression analysis identifies what genes are expressed at a given time between healthy versus cancerous tissues or between varying samples subject to different environmental or drug conditions. Other use cases are transcriptome assembly studies or de novo assembly, determining novel transcript isoforms, alternative splice sites, gene fusions, and nucleotide polymorphisms in the transcriptome and non-coding RNA studies. Non-coding RNAs, especially lone non-coding RNAs and microRNAs, have emerged in numerous studies as crucial regulators of various biological processes by regulating the gene expression. A lot of studies have applied RNA sequencing in deciphering disease associations with gene expressions or in alterations in the gene expression profiles in response to an environmental stress. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you found this overview about RNA sequencing and the use cases of RNA sequencing helpful and informative.